Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Patricia. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'd like for us to be friends. So please do me a favor, click the subscribe button and let's be friends. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for not giving up on me. I know it's been a while. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, like this video, share, comment, and um, do all the good stuff. I had one of you guys ask me how I came up with a pattern for the skirt that I made in my previous video where I showed you how I made a pencil skirt with a fringe. If you haven't watched that video, I'm going to leave a link below so you can go ahead and watch that video. But I thought I would just go ahead and make a video showing you how I draft the pencil skirt or the basic skirt. Depending on how tapered you want it, you can always modify it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Enjoy. To draft the skirts, we'll need a skirt curve, a straight ruler, a skirt ruler if you have one, a tape measure, which is optional also, a pencil. I will be using a marker for this tutorial. So I go ahead to um, align my square ruler with the straight edge of my paper and draw my first line vertically on my paper and then use a new line to square my second line across or horizontally on my paper as shown here. I then extend both lines to the end of my paper. Next you will need the following measurement as shown here. I divide my measurements by four as our pattern is constructed on the front half and the back half of the body. Next, I indicate on my paper the placement of my waist, high hip, full hip, and hem. Please note that the high hip measurement is not um, that important. I include the high hip measurement because of my body type. I have full hips, which is about 11 inches away from my waist. Including the high hip measurement prevents me from ending up with artificial hips. With my square ruler, I go ahead to draw and extend lines from the marks made. At this point, I also go ahead to include an inch and a half for my hem fold and extend the line across the paper. Next, I go ahead to label the lines. Next, I mark my measurements on the lines drawn. For my waist, I include one inch for my waist dart. Next, I join all the points. I do not join my high hip, it only serves as a form of guide. I then use my hip curve to smoothen the area around the hip to be more realistic as no hip is this pointed. Next, I measure 4 inches away from the center line on the waist and mark my dart. I also mark half an inch away from the dart on both sides for the dart legs and I draw a line about, about five and a half inches towards my hip for the dart leg. At the hem of my skirt, I add half an inch as shown here and I join it to the hemline. This is done for tapered hems, which makes it possible to fold and complete our hem seamlessly. I like to add a little bit of a curve to my hem so I add a quarter of an inch to the center front of the hem and I blend in with the rest of the hem. Next I go ahead to extend um, my waist by half an inch as shown here and blend into my waistline. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I indicate my notches by measuring that five inches towards my hip um, on the seam line for my waist. I also indicate on my paper that the skirt is to be cut on fold as shown here. Now we are ready to draft the back of our skirt. I basically repeat the same steps for the back. The only difference with the back pattern is the length of my darts which is 6 inches from the waist or 2 inches away from my high hip. The other difference would be the skirt fence which is also the opening at the back of the skirt which allows one to easily walk especially if the skirt is a tapered one and doesn't have any stretch. You will see towards the end of the tutorial that I forgot to add my vents but I later on go ahead to include that. Measuring 4 inches away from the center back, I mark the points for my darts and also my dart legs and I extend the line towards the hip, stopping at 6 inches from the waistline or 2 inches from the high hip. I repeat the same steps for my hem as shown here and I also include um, half an inch extension of my waistline and I blend that into the waist. Again, I use a curve ruler to smoothen the hip area and mark my notches for the back. If you have noticed, the um, back notch is two and the front is one. It's just a way of differentiating between the two. I then draw my grain line and label front and back and then I proceed to cutting our patterns. As I earlier mentioned, it was not until I have cut my pattern that I realized that I hadn't included the vents for the back pattern. So I fixed this by using a tape to join the pattern to another piece of paper. For the vents, I measured 8 inches away from the hemline towards the hip and then measured out 2 inches from the center back line and squared that down to the hem. To make sewing along the vent easier, I slanted the top part of the vent by coming down half an inch. Now we can go ahead to cut the completed skirt making sure our vent is properly secured. Feel free to make any adjustment to the pattern as needed like I'm doing here. Also note that I did not include seam allowance on my pattern. I include that on my fabric when cutting. However, I strongly advise that you include your seam allowance as a beginner. It took me quite some time to be able to eyeball my seam allowance on my fabric. Our skirt pattern is now complete. You can go ahead to cut and stitch on the muslin first before proceeding with your fabric when satisfied with your pattern. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!